Hi, it's Tanya. Thank you for tuning in yet again to my channel. Um, I'm making a video here to show how I made this getup. Um, this is a life water bottle. It can also be done with a smart water bottle um, that you use in conjunction with your Sawyer Squeeze. This is a very popular system for through hiking, backpacking, um, to eliminate the need for a heavy bladder that carries like two liters and just makes life a little bit simpler on trail. So I posted in a couple of my Facebook groups about doing this and just like I did when I saw someone else mention it in a comment, I was like, well, I had no idea that was an option to think about doing that because I'm a bladder girl. Like I need this hose here around my shoulder strap with my bite valve there to drink and, you know, stay, get the hydration that I need because otherwise I just don't force myself to stop, take my pack off, pull my water bottle out and drink. I, you know, I wanted the bladder, which normally is stored, you know, in the back of your pack, which I like that that is the weight is equally distributed. But with my weight, I figured out like the weight of my pack with my pockets on each side and what I store on each side for my through hike, that it's still equally distributed with one full bottle. bottle. This is a 750 milliliter bottle. Um, the smart water bottles and the life water bottles come in a variety of sizes, so get what works for you. Um, and then I keep beside mine, I keep my C-Knock and my Sawyer right here ready to grab so I can refill very easily. And if I need to, and I have done this, um, I can camel up by putting the dirty water in my C-Knock, put that in where my bladder would go or just throw it on top of my pack if I'm not going very far with it. And then I just squeeze that water, you know, fresh for cooking or into my bottle again. But the point of this video is how do you make this hose attachment to go down, <laughs> to go down into your water bottle to collect the water, come out and then get into your, you know, attachment on your strap. Um, so I am going to link in the description to, and I don't know the girl at all or have any affiliation with her, uh, but to the YouTube video that I watched to help me learn how to do this because you can actually buy these on Amazon. Um, but I was like, Hey, I think I have what I need to make it myself and finally save a little bit of money. <laughs> I've spent so much money on everything else. Um, so in that video, you'll see She's using a smart water bottle, but you need the sports cap fixture. I tore the back end of the cap off because I didn't need it any longer, but you do need the sports cap nozzle fixture that points up like this to get the hose to go through it. And then you need the hose from a bladder, which you can just buy um, at Outfitters or online. You can just buy the actual hose and the bite valve, and that could work. Um, my hose still has the little thingy at the ends to collect it through. Um, this was off of a Hydra pack, two liter, um, and it unclipped from the pack. So if you already have a bladder where, like I did, where the hose will unclip, then voila, you have what you need. Um, my Osprey Day pack, its bladder does not unclip. And I mean, I guess technically, I guess you could probably like cut it off. I don't recommend doing that. I mean, keep your bladder. It's a good bladder, but if you wanted to, I guess you could cut the hose off and stick it in there and, and make it work too. But, um, the, un the ones that unclip are, are the best. So I'm going to turn, I'm going to, I'm going to flip this around to try to explain a little bit better what I did here with, um, manipulating the cap to get the hose through it and how that worked. Okay. So this is where it unclipped for me from, um, my Hydra pack. Um, very easy to unclip right there. This actually pops out. So it was just the hose. So, I, and I didn't realize that in the beginning and I was trying to get the full width of this whole thing down through the size of the cap. And I was getting very frustrated because I couldn't get it wide enough. Um, but then I finally realized that this bottom portion actually pops out. And this one I'm saying like, you probably could actually just like cut your hose if that doesn't unclip because technically your water is still going to go up through your hose without needing this little end piece, but I stuck the end piece back in it and it worked great. Um, so what you have to do to manipulate your sports cap, she talks about in the video two different ways to do it, putting the cap actually in a vise and then taking a drill and actually drilling the hole of the cap 
wide enough to get to the width, the circumference, I guess, that you need to get your particular tube through it. Um, the other thing she talked about in the video is what I actually did was this plastic gets bendy or bendable, flexible with heat. So I used a hairdryer on high, hot heat blowing like right directly on it to get the plastic to be bendable. And then I took a pair of thick scissors um, and then also needle nose pliers that I just kept like sticking down into the hole and then twisting around in the hole to bend and stretch that hole out to get bigger and bigger. Um, and then in the very end, I just got frustrated because I couldn't seem to get it any, the circumference any wider than it was. I just cut a little slit on one side and that gave me the extra little space that I needed to get my hose to fit through the hole. And then I put the little end piece back on it down here at the end. Um, what I have found to be a problem, however, is by doing that, now I'm going to screw this back on and I put it in my thing and awesome, here we go. That little bit of extra gap around the tube leaks. So if you are bending over at any type of more extreme angle while you have your pack on, or if you throw your pack in your car or on the ground and your pack tips over, your water leaks around that edge right there. So that's what I've been working on fixing. And I think I finally found a solution that works and I took it off to redo it again for you here, uh, or at least part of it off to redo it again for you. So I put this in the water bottle to figure out how far down I needed it to always be, you know, to the bottom so that when, you know, it's always reaching water from the very bottom of it. And I made a mark with a Sharpie on the hose of where that spot is. What I really would like to have is an O-ring that is exactly that size to slide up in there. And when I was at Home Depot, I was like, I have no idea what size O-ring I need. And there's a million of them. And so, um, I had already kind of jimmy rigged it with the rubber band and I'm like, you know what? Forget it. I'm just gonna leave the rubber band because it's working. So when I did my shakedown hike, this was the, all the setup that I had was just this rubber band that I pushed and pulled this down so that the rubber band was nice and secure up in like where the O-ring would be. And then I screwed that in and it didn't leak on me and it, it worked great. What I'm going to do now is actually make this permanently secure like that though. Um, I'm going to get the rubber band up in there where it needs to go. And then I have this that I already had on hand. Um, this is Aqua Seal waterproof tape. I have this on hand for my RV anyway. Um, so I'm going to tape inside and out the cap to that positioning and seal off any of the places where it might leak, especially if it comes loose from where that rubber band is creating my O-ring seal. Um, and I think that this will pretty much be permanent and hopefully will stay in place and work through the whole trail. The other problem with doing that though, um, what I definitely realized on my shakedown hike is, you know, by leaving this on the tube, when I'm filling my water bottle, I'm carrying it with no cap or I have it sitting around at camp while I'm cooking or drinking or whatever, and it has no cap. So, and I also need the sports cap to back flush my Sawyer. So I'm going to go buy another life water bottle with a sports cap and I won't keep the bottle, but I'm going to keep the cap and I'll just store it in here with the rest of my water supplies um, so that I have a cap for when it's off. I'm around camp and getting water. I can cap it. And then I also have the sports cap for back flushing my Sawyer. So I'm going to work on taping this. I'm not going to actually do that on film. <laughs> um, and then I'll come back and show you how it looks all taped up. Ta-da! Lucky, lucky. No leaking. I'm even squeezing on the bottle right now. No leaking. Yay! So, oh. So I wrapped the top up real well in tape all the way around the cap and then up onto the hose. I did do a layer of tape on the inside uh, where the rubber band is, being very careful not to get in the threading. Um, so when I filled the water bottle up and then screwed it into this, I had to move the water bottle into the threads because this you know, cap no longer moves. Uh, it doesn't spin to, so like normally you would spin the cap onto the water bottle. You have to kind of do it backwards, spin the water bottle onto the cap. But 
success, no leaking, and hopefully this will last the majority of the trail. It is supposed to be waterproof tape. As we know, waterproof is a myth. <laughs> uh, I'm probably going to cut a few little slices of that waterproof tape and add it to my general resupply box. I may have my friends be like, hey, send me a couple pieces of that waterproof tape so I can redo this if I need to. So honestly, now all I need to do is go buy another bottle of life water and uh, take the cap, stick it in my supplies, and my water is completely ready to go to get on the trail in just a few days.